In an interview, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu stated that the Israeli military would facilitate safe passage for the civilian population before launching an expected assault on the densely populated Gaza city of Rafah. Netanyahu dismissed concerns of a potential catastrophe and emphasized the offensive's importance in defeating Hamas. He claimed that victory was imminent, expressing determination to eliminate remaining Hamas elements in Rafah while ensuring safe evacuation for civilians. Despite international alarm and warnings of a humanitarian catastrophe, Netanyahu asserted that detailed plans were being devised, including creating safe zones for civilians in cleared areas north of Rafah. The Gaza-based Hamas leadership predicted significant casualties, and international figures, including the EU's foreign policy chief, criticized the potential offensive. The United States, a key ally of Israel, opposed a ground offensive in Rafah, cautioning against poorly planned operations. President Joe Biden criticized Israel's retaliation for a previous Hamas attack, describing it as, over the top. The conflict, sparked by Hamas's October 7 attack, resulted in a significant death toll, with Israel launching a massive offensive in Gaza. Netanyahu rebuffed critics who opposed entering Rafah, arguing that such sentiments amounted to accepting Hamas control. Warnings from neighboring countries and mediators have been issued regarding potential disaster and repercussions if Israel proceeds with a ground invasion of Gaza's southern city of Rafah, where remaining Hamas strongholds are located alongside over half of the territory's population. Israeli airstrikes in Rafah resulted in the deaths of at least 44 Palestinians, including numerous children, following Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's announcement of plans for evacuation ahead of a possible invasion. Panic ensued among Gaza's densely populated Rafah, where many residents had fled following Israeli evacuation orders. Egyptian and Qatari officials warned of dire consequences, while Saudi Arabia cautioned of serious repercussions. Criticism of Israel's intentions also came from the United States and Germany, with concerns raised about a humanitarian catastrophe. Netanyahu remained determined despite the backlash, asserting the necessity of entering Rafah to eliminate Hamas. However, critics pointed out the lack of clarity on where civilians could seek refuge. Israeli airstrikes in Rafah continued, causing further civilian casualties, while clashes occurred at Nasser Hospital in Khan Yunis. The death toll in Gaza surpassed 28,000, with a significant number being civilians. The United Nations highlighted the severe overcrowding and displacement in Gaza, with approximately 80% of the population being displaced. Additionally, Israel claimed to have discovered tunnels under the UN agency headquarters in Gaza City allegedly used by Hamas militants. Elsewhere in Gaza, airstrikes in Deir al-Bala resulted in casualties, while two medics were found dead in Gaza City after attempting to rescue civilians. Former Republican presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy reiterated his belief that Democrats will replace President Biden with Michelle Obama on their party's ticket following the release of the special counsel's report. The report, authored by special counsel Robert Herr, raised questions about Biden's cognitive abilities but did not recommend charges against him. Ramaswamy argued that the report presents a convenient path for Democrats to nominate Michelle Obama, citing concerns about Vice President Kamala Harris's ability to lead effectively. He suggested that selecting Michelle Obama would align with the Democratic Party's ideology while providing a more palatable alternative to Biden in a general election. Ramaswamy interpreted her's decision not to bring charges against Biden as a sign of the president's eventual willingness to step aside. The report highlighted instances where Biden's memory appeared hazy, including forgetting key details about his time as vice president and his son's death. These revelations, along with Biden's recent gaffes, have raised concerns about his age and fitness for office. Ramaswamy's comments come amid speculation about Biden's future as the Democratic nominee, with former President Trump expected to be his likely opponent in the 2024 election. NATO is reportedly proceeding with plans to assume control of coordinating arms supplies to Ukraine, a role previously held by the United States, according to the Handelsblatt newspaper. The move is partly attributed to concerns over former President Donald Trump's potential re-election. Plans to transition the coordination meetings from the American base in Rhineland-Palatinate, Germany, to NATO's auspices have been discussed by U.S. Security Advisor Jake Sullivan and NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg. While supported by Eastern European countries, the United Kingdom, and France, the German government remains skeptical, fearing it may align with the Kremlin's narrative of NATO being at war with Russia. The shift would also facilitate engagement with states that support NATO but are not members.
The next meeting is scheduled for February 14 at NATO headquarters in Brussels. Recent discussions within the Ukraine Defense Contact Group focused on Ukraine's long-term needs for increased supplies of long-range weapons. Despite previous tensions, Ukrainian officials have expressed willingness to collaborate with the U.S. president elected by the American people. Trump's statements regarding ending Russia's war against Ukraine have drawn criticism from Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, who characterized them as surrendering territory to Russia. Zelensky also extended an invitation for Trump to visit Ukraine. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un issued fresh threats of military action against South Korea during a 76th anniversary celebration of the North's Korean People's Army. According to the state-owned Korean Central News Agency, KCNA, Kim referred to South Korea as the most harmful primary foe and reiterated the policy to occupy their territory in case of a contingency for the eternal safety of North Korea. These remarks are part of a series of escalating comments from North Korean leadership, which has threatened to destroy South Korea if provoked. Kim Jong-un has recently abandoned efforts to reunify with South Korea and has focused on bolstering the country's military capabilities. Particularly its navy. He emphasized the importance of the navy in defending maritime sovereignty and stepped up war preparations, directing efforts towards building a nuclear-armed navy. The construction of warships at the Namfo shipyard is part of a five-year military development plan set during a ruling party congress in 2021. Kim urged workers to complete the efforts unconditionally within the plan's timeframe, which extends through 2025. President Joe Biden has issued a national security memorandum that requires foreign governments receiving U.S. military aid to provide written assurances that the assistance will be used in compliance with international law. While not specifically directed at any particular country, the move comes amid heightened criticism of Israel's military campaign in Gaza. The memorandum aims to ensure greater accountability and compliance with global legal standards for the use of U.S. military aid. The directive requires governments receiving U.S. weapons to provide credible and reliable written assurances, particularly regarding compliance with international law and the delivery of humanitarian aid to affected civilian populations. The assurance process has a 180-day deadline for U.S. allies, while those involved in active conflicts, such as Ukraine and Israel, have 45 days to comply. The memorandum outlines a plan for addressing and resolving any issues that may arise with compliance, including actions such as refreshing assurances or suspending further transfers of defense articles or services. This move follows concerns voiced by lawmakers, including Senator Chris Van Hollen, who had proposed a budget amendment last year with similar international law compliance requirements for military aid. Van Hollen has indicated that he will withdraw the amendment in light of Biden's order. Texas GOP Representative Ronnie Jackson, a former White House physician, asserted that special counsel Robert Hur's report validates long-standing concerns about President Joe Biden's mental fitness. Hur's report, which examined Biden's handling of classified documents, described him as a sympathetic, well-meaning, elderly man with a poor memory. Jackson, who has previously criticized Biden's cognitive health, emphasized the drastic difference between Biden's past and present demeanor and highlighted concerns about his ability to serve as commander-in-chief. Despite Biden's assertion that his memory is fine and his defense of his re-election campaign, Jackson argued that Biden's subsequent address to the nation further confirmed concerns about his cognitive abilities. Jackson also criticized what he perceives as the weaponization of government institutions for political purposes by Democrats, suggesting that Biden's cognitive health issue is a national security concern. Jackson's past criticism of Biden's cognitive health has drawn responses from former President Barack Obama, who expressed disappointment at Jackson's comments on Twitter during Biden's presidential campaign. Jackson has previously called for transparency regarding Biden's mental health and has demanded that Biden undergo a cognitive test, a request that has been ignored by the White House. A Monmouth University poll released in October indicated that a majority of voters viewed Biden as too old to serve another term. Highlighting ongoing concerns about his age and fitness for office. The Israel Defense Forces, IDF, announced that it conducted raids on Hamas facilities in Gaza, killing approximately 120 terrorists and destroying 20 terrorist infrastructure sites. The raids, carried out over the past two weeks in northern Gaza, were part of a joint operation with the Israel Security Agency, ISA. The IDF, following information from the ISA, discovered a tunnel shaft near a United Nations Relief and Works Agency, UNRWA, school, leading to an underground tunnel used by Hamas. 
the tunnel passed under the building serving as UNRWA's main headquarters. During the raid on the 700-meter-long tunnel, a significant amount of intelligence assets was seized, allowing further operations against Hamas targets. The IDF subsequently raided UNRWA's central headquarters, finding large quantities of weapons, including rifles, ammunition, grenades, and explosives. Intelligence and documents discovered in UNRWA offices confirmed their use by Hamas terrorists. UNRWA Commissioner General Philip Lazzarini claimed the organization was unaware of what was under its Gaza headquarters and stated that UNRWA staff left the premises in October. However, Israeli Minister of Defense Yov Gallant accused dozens of UNRWA employees of participating in the October 7 terrorist attacks that triggered the Israel-Hamas war. Gallant criticized UNRWA as a group that supports terrorists and receives salaries from various countries. Israeli Minister of Defense Yov Gallant revealed to Fox News Digital that Israel has evidence implicating dozens of United Nations Relief and Works Agency, UNRWA, employees in the October 7 Hamas-led massacre, which resulted in the deaths of over 1,200 individuals and the kidnapping of approximately 240 people, including children and elderly individuals. Gallant criticized UNRWA as Hamas with a facelift and called for its dismantlement, asserting that the organization supports terrorism. Last month, UNRWA acknowledged that 12 of its workers were directly involved in the massacre and terminated their contracts. Following this revelation, at least 19 donor countries, including the U.S., suspended funding to UNRWA. The House Foreign Affairs Committee voted to advance a bill to permanently cut all U.S. aid to UNRWA in response to the allegations. However, there has been some opposition to halting UNRWA's funding due to the humanitarian crisis in Gaza. Despite controversies, UNRWA and its Commissioner General were nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. Additionally, a committee was appointed by UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres to investigate alleged breaches of UN staff regulations, rules, and codes of conduct related to the October 7 incident. Israel has criticized UNRWA for perpetuating the conflict and allowing anti-Semitic tropes to be taught in its schools. UNRWA, which employs over 30,000 individuals worldwide, serves approximately 5.9 million Palestinian refugees with an annual budget exceeding $1 billion, primarily funded by UN member states. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu stated that evidence implicating UNRWA staff in the October 7 atrocities strengthens the belief that UNRWA exacerbates rather than resolves the conflict. Olaf Scholz, the federal chancellor of Germany, responded to claims made by Russian President Vladimir Putin in an interview with American journalist Tucker Carlson by emphasizing the importance of continued support for Ukraine. Scholz stated that Putin's remarks belittle Russia's actions in Ukraine and provide a nonsensical explanation for the war. He stressed the need for solidarity with Ukraine in light of Putin's statements. The European Commission denounced Putin's interview, describing it as a repetition of old lies, distortions, and manipulations. UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak dismissed Putin's assertion that the conflict in Ukraine resulted from NATO expansion as nonsensical. Polish Foreign Affairs Minister Radosław Sikorski criticized Putin's claims as not new but expressed shock that an American journalist was spreading them. Israeli forces have uncovered a tunnel network, measuring hundreds of meters in length, partially running under the UNRWA, United Nations Relief and Works Agency, headquarters in Gaza. The military claims this as evidence of Hamas exploiting the main relief agency for Palestinians. UNRWA, currently facing a funding crisis and internal probe, disputes the allegations, accusing Israel of misinformation. The discovered tunnel, said to be 700 meters long and 18 meters deep, contained various rooms, including an office space, a chamber with computer servers, and another with industrial battery stacks. The Israeli military suggested that this location served as a central command for Hamas intelligence. UNRWA stated it vacated the headquarters on October 12, 2023, unable to confirm the Israeli findings. The Israeli military did not permit photographs of certain military intelligence during the closely escorted tour. The Biden administration plans to wait for an internal investigation into the United Nations Agency for Palestinian Refugees, UNRWA, to conclude before resuming aid to the organization, according to U.S. officials who spoke with Arab-American community leaders in Michigan. 
During meetings in Dearborn, a majority Arab American city near Detroit, U.S. Agency for International Development Administrator Samantha Power emphasized the U.S. commitment to providing humanitarian aid to Palestinians but indicated that aid to UNRWA would remain halted pending the investigation's completion. Sixteen countries suspended their funding to UNRWA after Israel accused some of its employees in Gaza of involvement in attacks on Israel. U.S. officials acknowledged mistakes and missteps in handling the situation but focused on messaging rather than committing to push President Biden to call for a ceasefire. The military offensive by Israel followed attacks by militants from Hamas-ruled Gaza, resulting in significant casualties among Palestinians, with only one truce so far, lasting a week at the end of November. The Philippines Coast Guard, PCG, accused China of engaging in dangerous and blocking maneuvers while the PCG vessel BRP Teresa Magbanua patrolled near Scarborough Shoal in the South China Sea. During a nine-day patrol, for Chinese Coast Guard, CCG, vessels shadowed the Filipino vessel over 40 times, with four Chinese maritime militia vessels also present near the shoal. Scarborough Shoal, located within the Philippines' exclusive economic zone, EEZ, is claimed by both the Philippines and China, leading to frequent tensions. The PCG stated its vessel was there to protect Filipino fishermen from harassment in their traditional fishing grounds. The PCG accused the Chinese vessels of performing dangerous maneuvers, including crossing the bow of the PCG vessel and disregarding international rules on preventing collisions at sea. China's extensive territorial claims in the South China Sea overlap with the EEZs of several Southeast Asian countries. In 2016, the Permanent Court of Arbitration in The Hague ruled that China's claims had no legal basis, a decision rejected by Beijing. Israel's foreign minister, Israel Katz, called for the resignation of UNRWA, United Nations Relief and Works Agency, Commissioner General Philippe Lazzarini following Israeli claims of a Hamas tunnel discovered under the evacuated Gaza City headquarters. Israel dismissed Lazzarini's claim of unawareness as an affront to common sense and urged his prompt resignation. Lazzarini, already under pressure due to allegations of UNRWA staff involvement in a Hamas attack, called for an independent investigation, denying the agency operated from the compound since October 12. Israel's military and security agency asserted the discovery of a 700-meter tunnel, 18 meters underground, connected to UNRWA's HQ, alleging the agency's facilities supplied electricity to the tunnel. Katz argued that the finding demonstrated UNRWA's deep involvement with Hamas. UN premises are considered inviolable in international law, but the Israeli military allowed journalists to inspect the compound and tunnel. Lazzarini insisted on an independent inquiry, citing the impossibility of conducting one in an active war zone. The UN has initiated two probes into UNRWA, addressing Israeli claims of staff participation in an attack and reviewing the agency's political neutrality. UN Chief Antonio Guterres and US Secretary of State Antony Blinken have defended UNRWA's crucial role in providing aid to Gaza. Japan has been steadily launching new Taigai class submarines, dubbed Big Whale, since 2020, with the latest being the JS Reijai, launched in October. These submarines are designed to counter potential threats from China's navy and are expected to play a crucial role in hunting Chinese warships in the event of a conflict. Featuring advanced capabilities and stealth technology, these submarines are equipped with modern systems and weaponry, including air-independent propulsion AIP, technology and lithium-ion batteries for enhanced performance and longer underwater endurance. The Taigai-class submarines are part of Japan's efforts to modernize its submarine fleet and increase its size to counter China's growing naval capabilities. With their advanced features and stealth, these submarines are considered valuable assets for ambushing Chinese warships in strategic locations such as the East and South China Seas. Japan plans to acquire at least seven Taigai-class submarines to replace its aging Oyashio-class submarines, demonstrating its commitment to enhancing its maritime capabilities. Taiwan's Defense Ministry reported the detection of eight Chinese balloons crossing the Taiwan Strait in the past 24 hours, with five flying across Taiwan. This marks the second consecutive day of a significant number of balloon sightings. Taiwan has been vocal since December about these balloons, citing concerns over aviation safety and labeling them as psychological warfare attempts. The Defense Ministry's daily report detailed the sightings, with five balloons crossing the northern and central parts of Taiwan. China's Defense Ministry did not respond to requests for comment.
China has dismissed Taiwan's complaints about the balloons, attributing them to meteorological purposes rather than political motivations. Tensions between China and Taiwan remain high, with Chinese warplanes frequently operating in the Taiwan Strait and crossing the median line, despite Taiwan's objections. Taiwan recently elected Vice President Lai ching te as its next president, described by China as a dangerous separatist. Lai, who assumes office in May, has expressed willingness for talks with China, which have been rebuffed. The potential for China to use balloons for spying gained global attention last February when the United States shot down a Chinese surveillance balloon, though China claimed it was a civilian craft. UN experts are investigating 58 suspected North Korean cyber attacks between 2017 and 2023, estimated at $3 billion, allegedly funding its weapons of mass destruction program. Cyber attacks by North Korean hacking groups affiliated with the Reconnaissance General Bureau reportedly continue. The report comes amid increased tensions as North Korean leader Kim Jong-un threatens South Korea and conducts weapons demonstrations. Despite UN sanctions, North Korea enhances its nuclear weapons program, operating a light water reactor at Yongbyon and conducting activities at the Pungiri nuclear test site. North Korea's nuclear arsenal size varies, and Kim vows to increase it following failed diplomacy with the U. S. The DPRK launches ballistic missiles, including an intercontinental one, and places a military satellite in orbit. It also retrofits a diesel submarine into a tactical nuclear attack submarine. North Korea evades maritime sanctions, imports petroleum products, luxury goods, and allegedly supplies arms in violation of sanctions. The panel investigates reports of DPRK nationals working overseas and accessing the international financial system illicitly. UN sanctions inadvertently affect ordinary North Koreans, impacting humanitarian situations and aid operations. Donald Trump, the Republican frontrunner, declared at a rally in South Carolina that, as president, he would encourage Russia to act as it wishes towards NATO allies who fail to meet defense spending targets. Trump recounted a conversation where he supposedly warned a NATO member that if they didn't pay their bills, he wouldn't protect them and would encourage Russia to do as it pleased. This statement drew criticism from the White House, with a spokesperson calling it appalling and a threat to national security. Trump's remarks come amidst ongoing conflict in Ukraine and Republican skepticism towards aid to the country. He also called for an end to foreign aid unless given as a loan with favorable terms. Trump's stance on NATO has shifted over time, from initially questioning its value to later endorsing its mutual defense clause. He has claimed credit for increased NATO spending, attributing it to his threats. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg warns that if Russia prevails in Ukraine, its aggression could expand to other countries, necessitating active preparation among NATO members for a potential long-term confrontation. Stoltenberg emphasizes the need to bolster defense industries to deter Russian aggression and support Ukraine. He stresses the importance of swiftly transitioning from peacetime to wartime production to enhance military capabilities and aid Ukraine. Recent statements from European NATO countries, including Germany and Sweden, echo concerns about the risk of Russian aggression in the near future, urging readiness for potential conflicts and emphasizing the importance of preparedness in the face of a shifting security landscape.